Hi, Art Family. Welcome to my studio. I'm so happy that you're here today. It's Dina Tollefson and my little dog, Muffin, and uh, my birds, Grishy and Romeo, and we're really glad that you're here today. It's going to be a great one. And today I'm going to be sharing with you the process that I used to create this painting. And I've named the painting together, and it's about two daylilies, two anthropomorphic daylilies who are in love. And in addition to uh, showing you this, the technique that I used to create the painting along the way, I'm going to be sharing with you four tips on how to create the perfect color for your artwork. So um, as a painter, uh, whether you are working in gouache or acrylic or watercolor or oils, uh, whatever that is, there'll be a time when you need to create a color and you don't have a color that's out of your tube or out of a pan that is just the right color. And being able to mix that color and find that yourself uh, is super important. So I'm going to be giving you these four tips on uh, how to do that in today's video. So let's get started. So to start us off, I'll just give you a quick little review of part one, and I'll include a link for part one for you in the description. But this is the underpainting um, for the Together Daylilies, and this is all heavy bodied acrylic, and uh, just showing the steps of how we went from an empty canvas up to the point where we are today, where I'm gonna be showing you how I'm applying um, this thick texture in a technique I developed called Daubism and showing you these tips. So the first one is using a palette knife to mix your paint. It's going to save wear and tear in your brushes and you won't have any wasted paint uh, because all of the paint will be able to just wipe onto your surface with your knife. So I'm going to demonstrate here. I'm adding some white to some phthalo blue red shade and I'm creating what's called a tint, and then using the knife to test up onto the canvas and see if we have the right color, and that color looks good. So, um, so we can use that now and put the first daub of paint onto the canvas, creating a really thick, luscious texture. So now let's get this tint up onto the canvas. So this light blue, I'm able to mix that color myself by just literally adding just a little bit of titanium white. And adding white or making a tint is a great way to lighten, to cool, or to neutralize your color. Uh, titanium white, if you're using that, it's very strong, and mixing white is a very soft mixer. So you can use either mixing white or titanium white. Either of them are good options for, for mixing. If you're gonna use mixing white, um, you'll need to use more of it. If you're using titanium white, you'd use less of it. So here, this is just primary yellow right out of the tube. I try and in my paint, uh, paintings to have a mix of colors straight from the tube and have a mix of colors that I've mixed myself. So um, you might, in your paint set, you might just have the primary colors, which would be say yellow, red, and blue, and maybe black and white. But if you have a wider set of colors, that's also good. But uh, just know that you can also mix all, pretty much all the colors that you need, most of the colors that you might need, uh, you can mix by just using the primary colors plus black and white. It's convenient to have the other colors, but they aren't necessarily needed. So let's talk a little bit about the dreaded mud. Have you ever had that where you feel like you put a color on your artwork and it feels like it looks muddy? Well, there's actually a little secret to that. There really is no uh, People say there's no such thing as mud, it's just the wrong color temperature. So you can get rid of a muddy color by adjusting the color temperature. So what do we mean by color temperature? So color temperature, if you look at your color wheel, um, it says here if you, um, if you add these uh, colors, if you look at the colors off uh, towards red, those are warmer, and the colors off towards blue and purple are cooler and color temperature is all relative so if you look at for example um, red that is a warm color um, but if you look at green green would be cooler than red but green is warmer than blue 
So it just depends what it's next to. So I'm just going to line up these colors. If you think of your colors like a rainbow, um, the colors that are next to it um, will determine how warm or how cool it is. So take this teal color, for example. This teal is warmer than the cobalt but it, uh, and, the, and the purple, but it is cooler than the green or the yellow or these other colors. So it's all relative. So if you wanted to um, warm up, uh, like look at this yellow here, for example, the yellow is warmer than the green, but it is cooler than the diarylide um, yellow or the orange. And um, you can just look at all of your colors that way. So if you want to adjust your color, what you would do is you would either warm it up with a color that's warmer on the color wheel, or you would cool it off by adding something cooler on the color wheel. So let me demonstrate that for you here. I have this color, this kind of mauve color that I made. It's a neutral color. I made it with titanium white and yellow ochre and dioxazine purple, but you know, it was too, um, it was too cool in color and I'm trying to match a little bit of color up on my canvas. So I added that diarylide yellow and I'm going to test it and see if it matches up with what I had put on the underpainting. And yep, there I could match the color um, by taking that kind of mauve color and literally just warming it by adding yellow. So yellow ochre is a color I love to use. I use it in my underpaintings. Yellow ochre is a very balanced color between uh, purple and yellow. Uh, it's between warm and cool. It's a very balanced neutral and it's nice to add these neutrals into your work. Um, they make the bright colors not look garish. It uh, just kind of balances everything out. And you see me painting here with a spoon. Um, I'm using a variety of spoons and palette knives to apply this texture, this Daubism texture. So now let's add a little bit more of the primary yellow and uh, do some more mixing. Get some yellow ochre. And now this uh, light color that I mixed, I took titanium white, the primary yellow, and the uh, yellow ochre and made a very nuanced light color, almost white, but not quite white. Um, I didn't want to have a bright white um, on the canvas didn't want it to look too harsh. Then another um, kind of a peachy color I mixed up. Um, now adding in some with that peachy color, just putting that on with the spoon. There we go. Just thinking about balance across the painting, the size of the marks, where the colors are going. Um, this color that you see here is, um, I took uh, yellow ochre and some primary yellow and a smaller amount of titanium white. But you can see all of these different colors, you can mix all of these colors, whatever you desire. Um, when you put your colors together, it's nice to have that mix of uh, primary colors and tertiary colors or nuanced neutrals. Using this thin, small palette knife, this is a blick, a small little blick. Let me see what the number is on here. I think it's a blick 67 or 61, blick 61 knife. So the third tip I've got for you is be creative. You know, if you don't have a natural looking green in your paint, uh, in your paint stash, consider mixing your own with yellow and black. I'll show you how that's done here. I'm going to take some of the Mars black. And use
using the palette knife to keep my, uh, my uh, brushes clean as a mixing tool. Just going to make a couple little puddles. We'll make uh, several different greens here. And using some of this primary yellow. And when you're mixing your own greens, um, one note of caution is black can be a really strong tinter. So um, you might want to um, put the amount of black out first and then add the yellow or just add a little bit of black at a time. We'll add some yellow here. We can, um, using different types of yellows, um, if you add like for example yellow ochre, you can make yet a different color. Diorylide yellow plus black would make a great, a wonderful color. I've got this color and I can see that it is too light. So um, I'm going to show you now how to make a shade. So when you add black to something, you are making a shade. A tint uh, is when you add white and a black is when you make a shade. You can darken, warm, and neutralize uh, any of your colors with black. So let's add a little bit of black here to the uh, green that we had and we can darken this color. And when you add black, you're also making it warmer. The, the color temperature is warmer. So let me test that here. And you know, it's a little bit dark. So let's add some of the yellow ochre, which is a neutral, but it's a yellow. And let's see if we can match up the color that's on the canvas. It's kind of a thrill for me when I can get a good match with the color. Let's give a little try here and see how that looks. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right, we've got a winner there. So that was Mars Black, Primary Yellow, and, um, and uh, Yellow uh, Ochre into that one. Now taking and creating another shade of just Primary Yellow and Black. By having more black in, we can create a darker color. All right, so just getting that nice dark color that we uh, mixed together, our own neutral color of yellow ochre plus a shade, plus, uh, plus black and, and yellow. Getting that up onto the canvas. And you can see I'm using a variety of different uh, palette knife w uh, widths and, um, and sizes to get a variety of different marks on the canvas. And the same tool can be used to make, um, depending on how hard you press, um, you can make large marks and small marks. So the same tool that can get these kind of wide things by holding the tool at an angle, but I can also just get little tiny little pinprick um, size marks as well. There we go. So another tip I've got for you is to rotate for balance. So if you rotate your painting surface often, that will ensure, help ensure that your work looks balanced. So let me show you what I mean here. I'm going to get a mark on the canvas and I'm going to go ahead and, and show you how I'm rotating my work. So this is a 36 by 18, a three foot by foot and a half size canvas. But um, I'm working on this, and whether I'm working on a little 4 by 6 canvas or I'm working on something that is, you know, 4 foot by uh, 3 foot, I'm going to definitely go in and rotate that canvas so that way the colors and the marks and all of the different work will look balanced because ideally your work looks good upside down and also sideways. If you find that you turn your work, and it um, does not feel balanced, then you can correct that by working on it upside down until it has a good feel and then rotate it back again to, uh, to front side. So now I've got it completely 180 degrees upside down and I'm working so that the marks, as I place the marks on the canvas, I get a, um, I get a sense of motion and energy which is balanced across.
Now these uh, colors that I'm putting on now uh, were mixed with pyrrole orange and a little bit of dioxazine purple. So now coming in with a spoon with naphthol red, just straight out of the tube, I'm going to put in some punches of bright, uh, intense color. Your color is going to be the most intense if it's not been mixed with another color. So something straight out of the tube is always going to be a brighter, more intense color than if you mix something with it. For example, if you mixed white or black or gray or any other color in um, with your colors, uh, that will be more neutral and more nuanced. So let's get that canvas rotated again. There we go. Just nice and easy kind of balancing out this color and the energy in the painting. There's Muffin if you look off to the side. You can see a little view of Muffin just walked past here to say hello. So let's get the canvas turned again now. So I'm thinking about all four sides of the painting. Uh, thinking about getting that balance going so now we can get uh, concentrate on getting that wonderful red here on this quadrant of the painting. And now let's get it uh, set back up um, to the correct original orientation. And I'm thinking also here this, okay, so this blue, I mixed this light blue gray with uh, titanium white, Mars black, and a small amount of ultramarine blue and created this kind of uh, cloudy day, uh, light gray color. And in color temperature, I am, you can see that this light gray um, color I'm putting is cooler and lighter than the other blues and blue greens that are on the canvas and I'm searching and looking to get a vibration between warm and cool colors and I really like that effect if you have a color and then you have something that's a little bit warmer and a little bit cooler sitting next to it it creates this kind of wonderful tension or a wonderful vibration in the work we go. All right, so now going back to yellow ochre, I'm uh, now looking and evaluating over the canvas to see where could the canvas benefit from some additional texture, some additional punch of color, and uh, just putting those final touches on. And here's a view, you can get a close-up view of the texture. I want the work to be up close, uh, a bit of abstraction of just different colors together. And then far away, I want it to look uh, more like something um, representational. And I feel like I've done my job if you want to reach out and touch the canvas. So here's the finished painting. It's called Together Daylilies, and I want to thank you so much for being here today in the studio. I hope that you will subscribe to my channel and give me a like and write a little comment to say hello. So until next time, this is Dina Tollefson, and all my best to you. Bye-bye.